There is no father like unto you. No one is mightier than you. No one is greater than you. No one is more loving than you. You are our everything. We owe everything to you. And so we bow in awe of your name. We give you all the glory and the praise. Lord, as you speak to us again, help us to respond appropriately. In the mighty, 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 mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Have your seat in his presence. I bring you the word of God very quickly. We are still looking at that very important topic. The spirit of indebtedness. We are gleaning wisdom from the word of God how to live a responsible life. We are gleaning wisdom from the word of God on how to live a responsible life. We are gleaning wisdom from the word of God on how to live a responsible life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we have found out that having the spirit of indebtedness is a basic requirement. So this message has been about inspiring the spirit of gratitude to God and to men. So every man, every woman who wish to live a responsible life should consider himself or herself a debtor of gratitude to God for the divine grace to be a living soul. Every man, every woman, who wish to live a responsible life, to consider himself a debtor, a debtor of gratitude to God, for the divine grace of being a living soul. Are we together? Now, if you are the one that has made yourself alive, you can kindly excuse us. But since it is by his favor that we are made alive, then we are indebted to him to be everlastingly grateful to him. So in addition to being a debtor to God, Every man is also a debtor of appreciation to men for the human support of all kinds so far received from different quarters to pursue destiny fulfillment. I have spoke at length about that in the last two sessions. Hallelujah. Amen. There is nothing called uh, authorship sources whereby you are the author of your sources. Different oh, people contribute ni, to make you who you are. So you are a debtor of appreciation to the different people that have played one part or the other. Giving you human support of all kinds from different quarters. 
for you to pursue destiny fulfillment. Now, so to kick start today, what actually is this spirit of indebtedness and what can we liken it unto? The spirit of indebtedness, as I keep on saying, is a basic requirement for the life that we enjoy greatness. To me, I consider it the positive form of vengeance. Hello, you know what vengeance is? You bully me, I bully you. So invert it. You bless me, I bless you back. So indebtedness is this is the positive form of vengeance. So, it is applying the emotion of vengeance to dispense generous reward to a person or to a system that has contributed to your life. So, when somebody does you evil, the way it pains you, so when somebody does you good, are we together? Let it also give you, give you joy. The way you want to give it back to the person that slapped you. So give it also back in positive form to the person that supports you. Are we together? So, if you understand what vengeance is, then invert it and apply it positively. That is gratitude. Motivated by the spirit of indebtedness. You see, indebtedness, okay, is what will prevent you from saying bye bye to a relationship that has once helped you. Am I talking to somebody? So, so indebted people don't say bye bye, they give back. So, indebted people have the stay on to serve more mentality. Hello. Stay on to serve more mentality. That is why indebted people are always consistent. Consistent in relationship, consistent in service, consistent in friendship. So rather than quit, to stay on and serve more. So I'll give you a few examples today, but let's start with King David. But before then, know this about life. Life, especially when it comes to relationship, is a mixed bag of Pleasant and unpleasant experiences. Hello. 
when you enter any relationship, it's not going to be all true pleasant experiences. It's not going to be all true unpleasant experiences. Life is a mixed bag of what will be pleasant to you and what will be very unpleasant to you. You will have a taste of the better. Hello, you will also have a taste of the bitter. So, generally speaking, life experience can either make a man better or make him bitter. People that, people that you see venting their anger on virtually everybody. It's not everybody that has done them evil. Just one man did them evil and they can't undo it well. And so they are spreading their bitterness everywhere. But when you look at it again, and you sit them down, and you educate them to the reality of life, you will locate one man savior, one man angel who helped them to keep them alive or to give them the sustaining power that made them alive. So, whether in life you will stand on the positive side of kindness or you are going to respond to life from the negative side of bitterness in your dealing with other people. It's a question of understanding the subject of indebtedness. Indebtedness. <laughs> Let me put it differently. Life has two sides. It has the positive side of kindness. We are few people on that side. And all they seek to do in life is to be kind. Then life also have the second side called the side of bitterness. And we have people who are standing on that side responding to others with bitterness. And this is being dictated by the kind of understanding they hold about the spirit of indebtedness. Hello. They are taking vengeance from everyone that come across. But that's path. not the way to enjoy life. Am I talking to somebody? So, so what will remove you from that side of bitterness and put you on the side of those who serve kindness? Okay? Is the kind of understanding you hold about the spirit of indebtedness oh, and how wa, to use it positively. So, so naturally, every man that has been robbed or wronged by his fellow man will express bitterness. 
and seek vengeance. There is healing in the house this morning. There shall be healing for every heart that is bitter. There is balm in Gilead this morning. Every wounded soul will receive the balm of healing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, what can you tell a young girl raped and despised by his father that men are good? Am I talking to somebody? So, naturally, every man that has been robbed or wronged by his fellow man will express bitterness. Such a person will seek vengeance. Some people today have missed their angel of hell because one man in a particular tribe did them evil and they generalize that all men from that tribe are evil. So every man that has tasted of wickedness of order, they live in bitterness and they seek vengeance. But with Salvation. And with the understanding of the spirit of indebtedness, as a magnet of God's support for greatness, a man can sift from the camp of the wicked, the camp, the camp of those who are dispensing kindness. David as a man emotionally wounded and battered on every side. But with the spirit of indebtedness, he chose to stay on the positive side of relationship. He demonstrated abundant spirit of indebtedness. I have described life to you as a double-sided experiences. David had full cup dose, in fact, overflowing cup dose of evil from fellow men. But at the same time, every window of kindness that he enjoyed, he magnified above his bitter experience. He had the bitter experience with Saul. And also had the bitter one with, I mean, the better one with Jonathan. And this gave him the opportunity to choose where to stand between the act of wickedness and the act of kindness. And I found out that the spirit of indebtedness allowed him to decide, to decide right. In Second Samuel chapter 9, we found David 
seeking for who was left in the family of Saul to whom he can show kindness. And no, if, if you were if you were David, will it ever cross your mind? To to ever think of anybody from the lineage of Saul to help. The man who used all his life to pursue David as sieve, uh, hunters are pursuing partridge in the bush. Saul, when you told you about you are here, a daffy, big bat, you are a bro. But when God established David on the throne, you are looking for how to revenge it on your uncle's children. Find a place in your heart to forgive this man. Why? Because you know, for me, daddy. If he take you shedding tears on this altar, see Obani lo wipe ni ki o sokulo ri pepe. Shed that tear this morning. Ri wipe o sokun ni kote olonu and give up that bitterness to receive a better life from God. I koro kani ki o si wa file ni e she oluwa ki o legbe gbe aye ti o wulo. David did that. And God, on the account of that, supported him all through his life. Saul did him grave evil. But even within that family, God raised a Jonathan. You remember that time when your uncle will say there is no food for you. Yet, one of your cousins, the, the son or the daughter of your uncle, will still sneak out to give you food. Why will you not, on the account of that little girl, that little boy, have a place in your heart to forgive? And remember when I was growing up, a young chap in the secondary school. And uh, I traveled to my parents during holidays. Mosi wa gbodu ni lo sodo awon obi mi. Ti mo ba. Ti mo ba gbodu de sodo gbodu lo sodo awon obi mi. All they can afford to give me as pocket money. Oh, ti won lagbara ti fi fun mi gege bi owo ti mo le fi sapo. If I will spend it as I ought to spend it cannot last more than 3 weeks. And you know we have 12, 13 weeks in a time. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we were staying with the grandmother. And uh, the Two of my cousins were also there. And the uncle was always around a little more blessed than my father. And some of the boys And so when my cousins go to him to take their uh, pocket money every other day we are going to school. So when we get to school, they will buy rice, they will buy perform a lot of perform of class. Okay. I will wake up very early in the morning, left over yesterday, I'm like, I will eat. <laughs> yeah. And that's all that survives for the day. And God gave me some measure of spirit of contentment. I will never walk to anybody to beg for anything. But 
One of my cousins. One day he summoned courage. As the uncle was giving him his own money. He said, brother Sunday in that. He has that. Where is that of brother Sunday? He didn't give him. And he came back to me and said, you you pay you pay you pay pay. He said, I asked for your whole money, but my father refused to give me. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But thank God for the grace of salvation and for the grace of the spirit that I'm preaching. I didn't find any reason to be bitter against my uncle, neither against any of his children. To the degree to which God will help me. I make myself available. It tastes the grace of God. But God can also give you the same grace. In 2 Samuel chapter 9 from verse 1 to 7. And David said, is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may see in kindness for Jonathan's sake? David is a very pay or can you know how anything she did? Saul look who see baby, Kia Mikiole say, or a phony Tori Jonathan. Anyone left of the house of Saul, if he stopped at Saul, that family did not deserve. To be blessed. Any can be any new delay soul be to mole shellore. Toba she petit soluni, y delay. Well, it was anything. But David look beyond Saul. To man, Daffy D. Oh, what are your tissues? That's what look beyond your haters. Look beyond the person that has done you evil. Wo ta you a mato tisha la buru. Wo ta you a mato mato kodi la re si waju. He said that I may see him kindness for Jonathan's sake. Yeah, miki ole shelo re ni tori ti Jonathani. You see, in every society invested with souls, there are also Jonathans. Ni bo go a wujo e yito ya ni ani a mwe ni a bi solu. Am I talking to somebody? So let Jonathan's inspire your reaction, not Saul's. And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Seba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Had thou Seba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may seal him kindness? I may seal the kindness of God unto him. And Seba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son. This Seba also demonstrated some level of wisdom. He pointed to Jonathan. He said, Jonathan had yet a son, which is lame on his feet. Siba si yufu obape, Jonathan ni omwa kan sibe, ti o ya aro. Hello. Time we fail me to go into how unqualified me people said was. Ele yi ayo sifu mi, la ti le so bi, me people say ti, ko se jeni ti, that he was lame on his feet. Already disqualify him from standing in the king's court. And the king said unto him, Where is he? Oh, my son, go check him out. Come on, say. And you don't saburu, am I not your love? For those that are doing evil, remember. And you told them, so that when the people go, oh, Father, my people, you be be back, go, and one man here go. Many of you that are doing good, if you didn't hit the reward, your children will definitely enjoy the reward. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Siba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Macha, the son of Amiel in Lodeba. He be some banish here, see here, gang. Time we fail me to go into that. He beat you on law, lay on Monty and Queen, and move be set to see you, Papa, a cocoa leg by Melatis Then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of my child, the son of Amel from Lodeba. Now, when may people said, who understood how unqualified he was, either 
by his antecedent or by the accident he had. The son of Jonathan, the son of Saul was coming to David. He fell on his face and did reference. And David said, may people say, and he answered, and he answered, behold thy servant. And David said unto him, don't say anything. Fear not, for I will surely see the kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. And will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father. And thou shalt eat the bread at my table. Not just once, but continually. If you say, I'm a John Tani, I'm a Saul, see, to Daffy, you are. Oh, see, Wola, and you are, you are. Oh, see, Bola, fum. Daffy, we pay, the people say, see, oh, see, that we pay, whoa, you know, share. Daffy, this is we for pay. Masha, Beru, Nitori, Penny, Tori, a mule, sure, for Nitori, John Tani, Babare, a mule, see, don't feel, whoa, whoa, he left Saul, but. Oh, see, my baby, John, Nick, Babu, go need you, Jay. He raised his voice in argument against that head. He called himself a, do a dead dog. But the king said, you either dead dog or dead, uh, dead rat. I will help you. May people say to the equirate, and that last and last. So, my daffy is all going on to a walk, we are a one more bammy, Jalori Tabili. Now, that attitude demonstrated by David, he really was, he daffy, it's not just a one off habit. He has developed that spirit of indebtedness over the time. If you read 1 Samuel 30, he said, Your father is dead. You will read about his Siglag experience. Are we together? Where the Amalekite came, burnt his camp, killed all his animals, then take away his wives. Take away all his belongings. And as he was pursuing them, he met an Egyptian boy who was the servant of the Amalekites. Part of those who destroy his camp. And that, and that one was, was dying. You were David. What will you do to that kind of boy? Answer me. Helpless and die. And it was part of those who had done you evil. You help him to die completely. He wanted to die half before. Are we together? So, but what did David do? So, he gave him bread. He gave him water. Meanwhile, if you read Genesis 25, Genesis from verse 1 to 12. You have the Ziglag story in chapter 30. Before, but before chapter 30 is chapter 25. Chapter 25 comes before chapter 30. So he had a bitter experience in chapter 25. That should have made him to form an habit of vengeance. In such a way that when he meets anybody okay, that needs his help, he should also refuse them help. In chapter 25, 
When he was running away from Saul, in the wilderness, he ran out of food. And then he had that there was a rich man. There are plenty. The man is called Nabal. He now sent his men to that man. Go and tell him that when I met your servant, the keepers of your sheep in the field, I defended them against the Marundas. Now it's time for you to also reciprocate with help. But how did Nabal answer him? Nabal said, a fugitive like you. Nabal is you he was Hello, he was using his problem with Saul to nag him, that to take advantage of him, to insult him, and to put it to his face that he should go and die. How do we get you? Osibel is in Nimbu. So no food for you, no water for you. Hallelujah. Now a man that his society has done that to. Hello. Aye. If he comes across somebody that is helpless, if it were people that God has not touched, what do you think he will also do to people who need his help? Answer me, George. But when he met that Egyptian, he didn't do to the Egyptian the way Nabal did to him. He, he magnified the positive side of life. Above the negative experiences of life. So, kindness, sympathy, empathy, are all product of the spirit of indebtedness. So if you don't have it, it may be very difficult for you to be kind. Because life has also not been kind to you in the past. Because you have not received sympathy in the past. If you don't have the spirit of indebtedness, the spirit of gratitude to God and fellow men that has done you small evil, you may not have a reason to show sympathy. So we saw empathy in David. Are we together? That if I do to this boy, this Egyptian boy, what Nabal did to me, this boy will die. And what will that what gain will that be to me? So this is the summary of the message as we pray. No matter how much you have been wounded, no matter how much you have been wrong, no matter how much you have been abused, the Holy Spirit is in the house this morning the Holy Spirit is in the house this morning to heal you 